a toda la afición de la Lucha Libre. Este que les habla es Michael Morales Torres, integrante del equipo de Lucha Libre Online. Y tengo el privilegio de presentarles a mi invitado en la tarde de hoy de Inglaterra para el mundo. Él es el campeón mundial peso completo de la NWA. Él es The National Treasure, Nick Aldis. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well, Michael. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we just wanted to start this uh, interview with what everyone is talking about, and that's uh, United, United Wrestling Network, NWA and Thunder Studios, reached an agreement uh, on a new live weekly wrestling pay-per-view available on Fight TV. Uh, it's going to be called United Wrestling Network's Primetime Live, uh, which will premiere on Tuesday, September 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, what can you tell us about this new era of this new chapter of the NWA? Well, yeah, it's exciting. Um, the, uh, the the opportunity um, was presented to to David Marquez, uh, the, you know, who, who operates uh, United Wrestling Network, and obviously we've had a, a relationship with with David uh, dating back to Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and um, and then. Uh, Thunder Studios have, have uh, come on board as as uh, as the partner in this for the location in Long Beach. It's um it's a beautiful facility. You know the the, the production value is going to be very very high, and you know uh, we're just excited to be able to get back to to presenting some content. You know it's obviously uh, COVID was you know difficult for all of us, and um, it was we, we made a conscious decision not to go back to GPB Studios in Atlanta because we just felt like it would it wouldn't have that same it wouldn't have the same magic without the audience there you know for, that, that we did at NWA Power so um, we we just decided uh, to to wait until the right opportunity presented itself and present something new and different um, until we're able to to do Power again the way that it, that people have grown to love. And NWA Power was trending worldwide each and every week before this situation happened. So definitely the audience is going to be thrilled, specifically the Latin American audience, which was really enjoying this product uh, of old school pro wrestling, old school way of cutting promos, new talent uh, mixed with the veterans, like, for example, Mr. Anderson, yourself, among many others, Eli Drake. It's an amazing roster. We're definitely thrilled to see this. I'm going to say this in Spanish, even though it's going to have closed captions or subtitles. Uh, para los fanáticos, a partir del 15 de septiembre a las 9 de la noche en Fight TV, uh, United Wrestling Network, NWA y Thunder Studios se unen en una alianza eh, sin precedentes. Y a partir del 15 de septiembre ellos van a estar presentando su programa semanal disponible en Fight TV desde las 9 de la noche. No se lo pueden perder. Uh, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, NWA, what's uh, the vision for NWA's future? I mean, it's kind of a complicated situation for every company, uh, but NWA, as mentioned, uh, had uh, this huge boom once it debuted power. Uh, it got a little bit stuck due to this pandemic situation. Now with this alliance, uh, what's going to be NWA's uh, future in the immediate future? Well, I think the, the the good thing about us is that we had sort of positioned ourselves as a digital content brand anyway. Um, before we started doing power, you know, with, with the 10 pounds of gold series and the way that we were producing um, our content, you know, and then basing it around pay-per-views uh, and, you know, single events in a sort of much more of a kind of prize fight boxing or UFC kind of style of, of promotion. Um So really, we just we just had to we're going back to that. Um, we know that there's a lot, lot of wrestling out there. We know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of competition, and it's a big demand on people to watch. You know, five hours of WWE, then two hours of AEW, and then two hours of Impact, and two you know, and, and etc. So we we've always opted to want to be the brand that uh, that that is about quality rather than quantity, uh, and and we want people to, to think that, you know, when they part with their money to see an NWA event, it's because it's something they really want to see. Um, and, and they know they're going to get really high quality. So it's really just been a case of trying to find the right, um, the right way to facilitate that, 
that. And I think that that um, taking part in these in these events um, that are being you know that, that that are being presented by by us and United Wrestling Network at Thunder Studios, it's like that's a that's the right that's the right combination because those though, even though those shows are weekly the NWA will, will kind of have a stronger presence at certain events. So the idea is we don't expect fans to, to buy the pay-per-view every week. You know, it, it's just that there's just an available pay-per-view slot for whoever wants to take part in it, you know, and, and we'll, you know, so we'll basically focus on certain ones and say, okay, this is the one that we really want you to focus on. And we'll go and, and uh, we'll build out our content to, to feed those pay-per-views just like we did with the 10 pounds of gold series. And the good thing is, is that now that we have an outlet for, for the guys to get back to work, you know, now we have the ability to produce a lot of extra content for our, our YouTube and for our Patreon and, and for other digital platforms. So uh, that's, that's basically the, the path forward as of now. We're also working on, um, a, a second project uh, based more around uh, a, a, a training facility and um, and content to accompany that. So th- you know, there's 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 plenty to work with, and I think that for the NWA, it's always been about putting out quality content on our own time. You know, and you know, really, we take we take the trust of the audience very seriously. So we don't ever want to compromise that by just putting stuff out for the sake of, of putting it out. Perfect. Uh, we saw that NWA was working with a ring on of Ring of Honor, at least with uh, Marty Skrull, previous to this situation. And uh, now in this new uh, era of the NWA, along with United uh, Wrestling Network and Thunder Studios, uh, we'll we may be seeing another uh, alliance with another company, maybe Impact, Ring of Honor, New Japan, or another company in order to complement the current NWA roster and bring some more talent and more competition. I think that there are several possibilities on the horizon for, um, for co-op- cooperation between the NWA and, and other promotions. I, I think that we've proven ourselves to be able to uh, establish talent in a way that they haven't been able to be established before. I think that's been evidenced by the fact that uh, several of several of the guys after getting exposure on NWA power were, were suddenly sought after, you know, and, and offered contracts with larger promotions. Um, and I think that speaks to the quality of our of our output, but it also it speaks to the loyalty of our fan base. I think what perhaps other promotions are starting to realize now is that uh, while the NWA certainly doesn't have the largest audience, it has a unique audience, meaning that there are people who only watch the NWA. So then if NWA talent transfer over to other places and we work with other promotions those promotions get a boost from, from our existing NWA fan base and ring of honor, you know, ring of honor uh, benefited from that tremendously. You know, they got, they got, they got the real world champion for all those shows, you know, and they got a a number of top talent. uh, And, you know, there were a number of ring of honor talent who, who were requesting to come, you know, were asking if they could come to work, at NWA power, you know, they wanted to be seen on that stage. They wanted to be presented uh, on that platform, you know, because we focus on, we focus on different areas. We focus primarily on, on interviews and promos, you know, and we do it in a, in a, in a way that, that really showcases and highlights the talents, individual abilities rather than production value or we're putting all the emphasis on the match or high spots. We, we, we make, we make it about the personalities. So, that's attractive to a lot of guys. So I think that as we move forward, the wrestling industry as a whole is going to demand more cooperation between promotions because they're going to, they're going to want to see dream matches. I'm, I've defended the title in ring of honor, you know, several times I've defended the title in, in many other promotions and I'm willing to do so, you know, at any given time, we've always said from the beginning, we're open for business with anybody. And I think that, I think that as, as we move forward and, and uh, and the audience demand grows greater. 
for fresh matchups and, and fresh rivalries, you're going to see more cooperation with the NWA and other major promotions. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, what do you think the pro wrestling industry and its community need to do in order to attract uh, more fans to consume pro wrestling in general, but specifically to the NWA? Uh, it's not a secret that many wrestling promotions have decreased in number of viewership weekly, uh, specifically during this pandemic. Now the NWA comes back with this uh, new product in a new studio that gives uh, the fans a new opportunity. But in your opinion, as the face of the NWA, what do you think uh, the companies, specifically the NWA, need to do in order to attract a uh, more big fan base? I think that I kind of touched on it in the last question. Is that I think it's got to. I think we've got to focus on personalities. I think it's got to be. I think we've got to keep doing what we've been doing, which is focus on the authenticity of, of the of the of the personalities of the of the performers, not uh, not trying to engineer every single thing, and you know, not trying to pre-plan every single word of a promo, every single move in a match, every single moment in a in a in a segment. Uh, you don't you don't make magic like that, um, you know. You've 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 got to give the talent some freedom to to explore and try things and and find that one thing that connects with the audience um, and then exploit it. You know, if you plan too much, then you, you know the audience doesn't feel like part of the process. You ha the audience has to be part of the process. That's why we didn't want to go back to GPB Studios until we can have an audience because the audience are such a big part of our show because we listen to them and we work with them. They, they are, they become part of the show. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think they loved our product because they felt, they felt like they were, they were, they were part of the show in a healthy way. They weren't taking it over. They weren't trying to hijack it. They weren't complaining. They were, they were actively, you know, they were encouraged to be part of our magic. Um, And to me, you know, the, the, the business has always thrived when the, the audience feel like they're on a ride, you know, when they feel like they're being taken on a ride and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they lose themselves in it. Um, I think that I don't, I don't know what the answer is for the industry as a whole. All I know is for us, we've, we've been slowly been building our audience. So we have to get back to work and we have to keep, doing things to be different to everyone else. And that's not, that's not me throwing shade at any other promotion. It's just a business. You know, it's just, we have to, we have our unique selling point. We, we do things in a certain way that makes people go, okay, the NWA is my jam. That's where I, that's where I want to, you know, that's where I want to hang my hat. And, um, and I think that over time when that happens, eventually people from people either lapsed fans or, just casual fans in general start to go, Hey, what is that? You know? And then they get on board. I've had, I've had several conversations with fans who said that they didn't, they didn't even watch wrestling. And then they start, then, you know, somebody told them about NWA power and they watched it and they fell in love with it. So for us, we've just got to get in front of them, you know, so it's, and, and yes, without a multi million dollar budget, that's, that's hard to do in terms of advertising and promotion but it's not impossible. And ultimately uh, the quality has to be there. The quality has to speak for itself because you can make everybody in the world aware of what you're doing. But if, when they, if they, if they all tune in and then they go, eh, then it's a waste of, you've wasted your money. You know, you have to perfect your best, then put it to market. So that's where we're at right now is that we're in the, we're in the phase of, uh, I, I believe we're in a phase now where five years from now, there are going to be people going, Oh, I liked the NWA before it was cool, you know? And then, and it's, and it's going to be a, you know, the commercial success is, is going to come, you know, in, in the years, in the years to come from here. Perfect. Oh, uh, Mr. Ellis, who inspired you uh, as a pro wrestler to do this as your profession? Um, Bret Hart was, was, was one, he was really my first sort of major hero, Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Uh, then later on, um, it was, it was the rock and triple H, um, 
you know, I loved Sting as a kid, but I just was more of a, with Sting. I sort of looked at him as more like a sort of larger than life cartoon character. You know, I sort of, uh, you know, and it, which is so crazy to think now that I've wrestled him and he's been such a big part of my my early career. Um, and then as I got into the business, uh, I, I really started to study Harley Race, and Ric Flair, um, uh, uh, several British wrestlers, Mark Rollable, Rocco, Fit Finley, um, Danny Boy Collins, you know, this, uh, you know, just a, a, a lot of guys, you know, who I just try and borrow a little bit here and a little bit there. And, and, um, yeah, and Hogan, you know, Hogan just, Hogan had that thing. He just, you know, I, I find myself instinctively borrowing things from Hulk, you know, without even thinking because he just had that ability to just draw the audience in and just, and make them pay attention. And, you know, and, um, you know, the industry wouldn't be what it is without Hulk today. So, I mean, I, I you know, I, I mean, and I even, you know, I borrow, I, I, I study, I study a lot of um, late eighties uh, Japanese stuff, you know, Kent, you know, Kobashi and Mizawa, uh, you know, Tenru, you know, guys like that. So, I mean, I, I really try to borrow from all over the place, but the guys, my first real hero was Bret Hart. Which is an amazing wrestler. I had the opportunity to meet him on November in Puerto Rico, and he's an amazing human being with amazing stories. I wanted to say something in Spanish in order for Spans, uh, or fans specifically, or Spanish audience to understand it. Uh, Nick Aldis tiene su mercancía disponible ahora mismo en prowrestlingtees.com slash Nick Aldis. Eh, excelente mercancía, pueden echarle un ojo eh, a todos nuestros amigos promotores de GW en Panamá, Wrestling Superstar en Chile, en República Dominicana Puerto Rico y en toda Latinoamérica Nick Aldis está disponible para bookings y es en Nick Aldis bookings at gmail.com Nick, Nick Aldis bookings at gmail.com y por último su figura de acción de colección estilo retro está increíble, yo quiero una intenté adquirirla pero aparecía en una cantidad limitada en el momento pueden buscarla ahora mismo en bodyslamclothingclub.com eh, ahora mismo aparece como les digo, eh, como sold out pero en su momento dado, van a volver a lanzar más órdenes porque era una cantidad predeterminada y es una oportunidad increíble para añadirle a su pieza de colección Mr. Aldis, last but not least, uh, what does the NWA World Champion mean to you? The 10 pounds of gold, the legacy behind the title, what does it mean to you and your career? I think it's the defining part of my career at this point, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I had a very successful run in, in TNA and impact, um, you know, and it was at a young age and I did some amazing things that, you know, that, that had you told me, you know, five years prior to that, 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 you know, those were the things I'd be doing, you know, team like teaming with Samoa Joe and, you know, winning tag titles all over the world in Japan and in the States, you know, teaming with Doug Williams and, and being, a, and, and, and being such a, a beloved tag team, people still bring up the British invasion to this day. Uh, you know, first, you know, wrestling sting and then being on the, being in a team with sting and the main event mafia with sting and Kurt Angle and, you know, getting to wrestle my heroes, beating Jeff Hardy for my first world title. You know, all of that was, uh, you know, amazing when you look back on it, but, I believe that, you know, in spite of that, uh, what I've done with the NWA and as the NWA world's champion is really the defining part of my career now, you know, to be able to take a championship with such a rich history, uh, but for a brand that was somewhat kind of uh, on life support, <laughs> You know, it was the, 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 no, nobody was really talking about the NWA, and then, to, and then, you know, within a year to be headlining All In with Cody, you know, arguably the biggest, you know, really one of the biggest events of the year in 2018, and and certainly the biggest non WWE event of the last decade. Um, you know, that's uh, that, you know that was that was less than a year. I started in September of 2017 with the NWA, and that was. And that was September 1st of, of 2018. So, you know, to, to go, with, you know, within a year to, to be in a sold out arena with, you know, with thousands of people standing at the bell was, you know, that was my gratification. And then since then, we've been able to build, um, you know, a business model where we have a sought after television show. We sell tens of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise every month. You know, we have 
a very good a very good amount of subscribers and we're building this fan base and, and sort of re reinvigorating the brand to those who were familiar with it but also introducing it to new fans who who were sort of unaware of it before but now are starting to understand about its history and its and its prestige to me um it's a huge honor and 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 uh i think it just it, if anything it's it's i i'd like to think that it's helped me sort of carve out my my place in history because i can because hopefully people will look back on this time period you know decades from now when the nwa is is way bigger than it is now and be able to say he, he you know it, it, it's he, he played a big part in that you know a lot of this is thanks to him um because i take it seriously to be you know to be mentioned in the same breath as as rick flair or dusty Rhodes, or harley race or dory funk jr jack briscoe you know I, I take that very seriously and i hope that one day fans can talk about me in the same way. I actually had the opportunity of seeing you live in Puerto Rico, specifically against uh, Billy Gunn at the moment, defending the title here in Puerto Rico, which is the definition of a world title. You travel with the belt, you defend that in every country, in every state you can. And that's the prestige you brought back to the belt, uh, which in my opinion, prior to you was dead for a while. Uh, and you brought that life that the company and the belt so much needed, and it's such an amazing opportunity to having to have the opportunity to see you once again performing uh, from September 15 on. I'm gonna say this in Spanish. Uh, desde 15 de septiembre, uh, 9 de la noche, pueden ver United Wrestling Network, NWA, and Thunder Studios. En Fight TV disponible por Pay Per View. No solo pueden perder 15 de septiembre, 9 de la noche. Mr. Aldis, thank you so much for the opportunity and we wish you the best of luck in this new project. Uh, thank you. And I'd just like to say uh, that those, those broadcasts uh, with United Wrestling Network uh, at Thunder Studios will also be simulcast in Spanish. So oh. that's... Uh, We, 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 we care a great deal about our Latino fans, uh, you know, and obviously being out in, in California, we're very aware of, of, of that fan base. And um, I've always loved going to Puerto Rico for my time with Lucha Libre. Yeah, so um, we, we always want to try to take care of our, uh, our fans. Uh, do you know who's going to be the Spanish announcers for that event? Because now we are all curious about this. Uh, this huge news or oh, we will need to wait until september 15 to know about it <laughs> uh i i i i think i would know who it who it will be it, it um but i can't remember his name um but he he's he's the guy that does all the the uh spanish broadcasting for championship wrestling from hollywood um but I will. I will make sure that we, that we make you aware, and I'll and I'll I'll let you know so that you can let your fans know. Perfect. So to everyone out there, it's gonna be in Spanish. It's gonna be amazing, and we definitely need to tune in on September 15, 9 p.m. Fight TV. Mr. Aldis, thank you so much, and thank you for the N the NWA too for the opportunity and for caring about the Latin American audience. Thank you, Michael. Muchas gracias. Gracias a ti.